the general solution of a problem to continuum mechanics is going to depend on three equations. And in order to do that, let's go with the first one. This is the equilibrium equation. For a solid in three dimensions to be in equilibrium, we have seen that we have to satisfy what are called the Cauchy's equilibrium, uh, equilibrium equations. And this equation is based on linear momentum and angular momentum equilibrium and tell us that the divergence of the stress tensor has to be balanced by body forces and by the acceleration of the of the of the solid if any this is basically f equal to ma because here density is mass density if i multiply mass density times volume i get mass all right so we have seen already what this equilibrium e equation looks like this is a compact form in a vectorial notation let's see the second equation that we're going to need this is what is called the kinematic equation and the kinematic equation is going to relate the strain tensor denoted with variable epsilon to displacements denoted with u displacements are vectors for example if i have this uh, section of a solid to move after the application of a, of a stress or a force into another location, then I'm going to have a displacement. And this is going to be a function of uh, the strains that result from such displacement are going to be a, a function of the displacement through this function that we're just going to keep generalized for now, and we're going to call it just F1. Then these are going to be the kinematic equations. Uh, kinematic, uh, uh, kinetic comes from uh, from the Greek of movement. So basically, here we are trying to relate movement to strengths. These kinematic equations, we're going to see basically two types. One, and is the one that we're going to develop in detail, which is the kinematic equations for infinitesimally small strains but you could also solve these problems with the theory of larger strains for most problems in rock mechanics you can get by by using small strains there are however some other problems uh, like for example the evolution of a salt diopere over geological time that is going to re to require the use of large strains. Okay, now that we have the kinematic equations, we're going to go into see the third equation that we're going to need any continuum mechanics problems, and these are the constitutive equations. The constitutive equations are going to link stress to strain through a function F2. The constitutive equations are going to be a function of the material properties and depending on the material that you have you may have different kind of constitutive equations we're going to start seeing what is the theory for linear isotropic elastic solid And this is the simplest theory for constitutive equations, but then you can have uh, many others that may be appropriate for your problem. Uh, for example, let me make a little bit of space over here. We're going to see later on also the theory of transverse vertical isotropic solids usually that go for the name of TVI, 
or also called axisymmetric uh, symmetry. Some of these are also, also by BTI geometry, vertical transverse isotropic. If you go one more level of complexity into linear elasticity, you could also have an orthorhombic model. And if you depart from elasticity, then you can go into other models, like for example, viscoelasticity, or further into plasticity. All of these are constitutive equations, and they are going to be appropriate for each problem that you solve, depending on uh, what is your particular problem. But in general, we're always going to have these three equations in order to solve any problem. The equilibrium equations, the kinematic equations, and the constitutive equations. So, in general, if you wanted to combine these equations, what you have to do is to, re to put the constitutive equations or actually kinematic equations into the constitutive equations and then the constitutive equations into the equilibrium equations. So this is going to look something like this. Let me start writing the equilibrium equation. The equilibrium equation told us that we need to calculate the divergence of the stress tensor. But now we know that the stress tensor is a function of strains. So let me leave the space for that and I'll continue using here the black stylus but I'm going to now put it in here instead of the stress tensor this function which depends on the strain tensor but we have seen that the strains depend on kinematic equations, right? So, if we go one step further then, now this e equilibrium equation is going to turn into uh, we need a little bit more space here this is not a G, it's a rho and this acceleration into function 2 of the kinematic equation which in this case is going to be F1 of the displacement at the end of the day what I want to highlight from this general equation is that in these continuum mechanics problems, our unknown is going to be the displacement. This is what we're going to solve for. If we uh, use a discrete solution uh, for this equation or we use an analytical solution, we're going to be solving for displacement. Um, for those of you which are more familiar with for example, fluid flow equations, when you solve for fluid flow equations, you solve for pressure. That's a variable that you're trying to solve everywhere in your domain. In our case, we're going to solve for displacement. After we get to know displacement with the kinematic equations, we're going to calculate the strains. After we calculate strains, we're going to be able to calculate stresses in the entire domain. So, this is in general uh, the workflow that we're going to follow for any problem. And uh, as I said before, we're going to start with small strains and with a linear elastic isotropic solid.